places you don't talk about at parties. You want me on that wall. You need me on that wall. Keep that frequency clear. And now it's conspiracy, see? They've made that something that, that, is, that is, should not be even entertained for a minute, that powerful people might get together and have a plan. Doesn't happen. You're a kook. You're a conspiracy bum. You're watching The Truth is Viral, the only news program on the internet trusted to deliver the truth since 2008. And now, here's your host, Mr. Bobby Powell. Welcome back to The Truth is Viral. My name is Bob Powell and you're watching us here on the Liberty One television network. My friends, I come to you tonight with a uh, heavy heart. My dear friend, Cal Howard. A man that was a mighty warrior in Christ. Died this morning after fighting a long and courageous battle with cancer. Cal was an example of what every man should be. He was colorblind. He loved everybody in Jesus' name. And the world is less without him. This episode of The Truth is Viral is dedicated to my brother. Rest in peace, Cal. I'll see you soon. Those who've been watching The Truth is Viral for a while know that I'm one of the few alternative media journalists that actually has a background in the mainstream media. During Operation Desert Shield and Desert Storm, I worked as a news anchor for KVUR Radio in Colorado Springs, as well as the CBS Radio Network, where my beat included Peterson Air Force Base, where the U.S. Space Command was located, uh, deployment of troops from Fort Carson, as well as NORAD, which was helping Israel detect incoming Scud missiles. And while, while I was there, during my, my time in Colorado Springs, I made some very interesting friends, friends that I have to this day. In fact, one of them is still uh, a good friend and a viewer of The Truth is Viral. And dude, I need to remind you that you owe me 50 bucks. <laughs> so go to my PayPal and, and, and pay up. I don't know what the interest is on $50 after 25 years, but uh, I'll forgive the interest. I just want the, the principal back. In any case... Uh, this morning, another friend of mine who is in Iran right now uh, told me that Iran has up to 50 nuclear weapons. And that confirms the testimony of former CIA spy Reza Khalili, who was embedded in the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps. And he was also a member of the United States Congress Congressional Electromagnetic Pulse Commission, along with Dr. Peter Vincent Pry and Claire Lopez, who is a, a CIA expert on the Middle East. And uh, Reza told me that when Obama was elected president, the Iranians already had enough enriched nuclear material for two bombs. By the time 2014 came around, the Iranians had enough nuclear material for six bombs. Okay, you see where I'm going? They've been this whole Iranian nuclear deal was a, a sham just to uh, give the Iranians time to, to build up their nuclear arsenal. And Reza also told me that uh, the Iranians had purchased two nuclear weapons from the, the failed Soviet states like Kazakhstan. And so they've been a nuclear power for a while. And you're not going to hear this in the mainstream media because it doesn't fit their narrative. Donald Trump cannot approach Iran the same way that he did North Korea. Because the Iranians are, are uh, radical Islamists, okay? <clears throat> Iran is a theocracy, and they govern their country according to Sharia law and Hadiths that have been around for centuries. They have no fear of the nuclear power of the United States or Israel, which has up to 600 undeclared nuclear weapons, because they feel that when enough bloodshed and enough chaos has has been uh, unleashed on the world, then their Islamic Messiah, the Imam Mahdi, will come to supernaturally protect them and sweep away the enemies of Islam. So, you, they're like I said, they're religious fanatics. They can't be trusted. 
and they are a clear and present danger to the United States. And I'm also going to bring you an interview with an author by the name of Patrick Heron. Patrick Heron's passed away since I talked to him. But he describes how New York City is the whore of Babylon, right out of the Bible. And he makes a really compelling case. And this goes hand in hand with uh, prophecies of uh, David Wilkerson, who saw New York City burning in fire, and, and others that uh, show that the United States is going to be nuked. That we will no longer be a, uh, a world power by the time the Gog Magog War rolls around. And what he has to tell you is terrifying. Uh, but they were, uh, uh, there was a preliminary agreement where U.S. would recognize uh, Iran's right to uh, peaceful uh, enrichment, uh, nuclear energy, and it would announce that uh, there is no military dimension uh, uh, to the nuclear program. Uh, these were the demands by the Iranians. And, and so uh, the negotiations uh, were discussed on, on the facts that Israel wants to attack, that President Obama is standing in front of it. And if you uh, look back, you'll see after the February, and when I reviewed that uh, initial uh, information, uh, we had uh, General Dempsey coming out and saying that Iran is a rational regime, it's not after the nuclear bomb. We have 16 U.S. intelligence agencies coming out with an assessment, just as Mr. Netanyahu then was traveling to U.S. to talk to President Obama about the nuclear, uh, Iranian nuclear program, uh, that Iran was not after the nuclear bomb. So they met their conditions, the U.S. counterparts uh, met their conditions, and, and then uh, Iranian Supreme Leader met his, which was to come out and say that the uh, nuclear bomb is against Islam and it's a great thing and we are not uh, we have no intention on having it. So those negotiations continued on with uh, uh, as I revealed on October 4th and then with an update on October 18th uh, in Washington with Iranian surrogates and uh, uh, agents coming here for talk and then uh, and then the October 4th revelation on the Doha Qatar meeting around the October 1st uh, where three U.S. Uh, representatives of President Obama's administration uh, met with the Iranian counterparts including Dr. Ali Akbar Velahedi, the ex-foreign minister and the close associate on international affairs to the Supreme Leader. By the way, he's wanted by the courts in Argentina for the Buenos Aires uh, a bombing of Jewish Community Center in 1994. Uh, so again, there it was emphasized that um, an Obama presidency would be uh, obviously much better for the Iranians because Romney would move closer to Israel. And uh, again, it was President Obama that has uh, stood in front of Israel not to attack Iran. Uh, and then they hashed out and urged for uh, for an announcement, some kind of announcement before the U.S. elections. Uh, on a partial uh, enrichment halt and, and a successful negotiation which would boost the re-election chances of President Obama. Uh, Khamenei has made the demand that he wants written guarantees of all the elements of the agreement before he allows the Iranians to announce such. Uh, but, but, but the Iranian foreign minister, the spokesman for the foreign ministry, right, right after I revealed and after the Doha meeting, uh, which is still uh, the White House has not verified, they announced that Iran is open for talks and even a partial enrichment. So, so it's all a plan, a grand plan uh, for an announcement before the election, and I think my revelation kind of uh, changed their game plan. Well, let me ask you a question. Even if there is some type of deal in place, can we trust the Iranians to keep their part of the bargain, or are they just doing this to stall for time while they continue to uh, pursue nuclear weapons? But that's a great question. You see, the, the regime has done this masterfully for over three decades. Uh, they've given the runaround to the West, uh, keeping in touch, providing hope while continuing full force with the nuclear program. Uh, and if you see uh, from the time President Obama took office, at that time Iran had barely enough enriched uranium for one nuclear bomb. Today they have for six. At that time they were only limited to 3.5% enrichment, which is for peaceful uses. Today they are enriching at two sites uh, to 20 percent, which was a major breakthrough in 2010 when they announced it. Going to 20 percent is only four to six weeks away from weaponization. 
you know, so they have uh, uh, they have uh, progressed significantly with both the nuclear program and the missile program. Uh, and so now they're not going to bind themselves to any agreement. And if you look at the details of agreements I've put out there, it's just basically a sham uh, of having some sanctions remove a partial halt while they continue on with the nuclear program. Hey, earlier this month, you wrote uh, that Iranian scientists are nearing completion of a nuclear warhead, having already successfully tested an implosion system and neutron detonator at a secret site while enriching uranium to weapons grade, which is what you were just talking about. Now, you've also written in the past that the Iranians have uh, former Soviet bloc weapons in their possession already from Kazakhstan, isn't that right? Well, uh, yes, I revealed them that the uh, Iranians have two nuclear warheads which they purchased from the former uh, Soviet republics after the, Soviet, after the fall of the Soviet Union. And uh, I, I provided several sources, uh, one of them with inside knowledge uh, 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 within the State Department, another one uh, within the Pentagon, that, uh, you know, the U.S. is aware of that. And actually, they believe these are uh, workable bombs. But um, talking to my source in the Guard's intelligence, uh, he said that there are doubts that they have the code and the KGB might have, might have pulled one over them. Um, and nonetheless, uh, the Iranians on themselves, the regime itself, is very close in achieving uh, an arming the warhead uh, uh, with nuclear weaponry, arming their missiles with that. And um, uh, basically the site that I revealed, uh, it, it's another nuclear secret site, and, and everybody should look into that. The IAEA and uh, uh, the, the intelligence agencies, uh, they should immediately monitor this site because uh, what I heard from my source, and I put up all the scientists' names, and obviously the father of the Iranian nuclear program, most of the factories are working out of that site. Um, they have successfully tested their neutron detonator, and this was verified by the IAEA uh, with their suspicion of what was taking place in Parchin, which the government has refused to allow them to inspect while they're cleaning the area. So, uh, you see, U.S completed its Manhattan Project decades ago, uh, in the 50s, 40s, uh, in three years. The Iranians have been working with the current science and technology for over two decades. So what, it is logical to think that they have mastered the technology and they're only working on arming their ballistic missiles with nuclear warheads. Okay. Now let's go to motivation. Uh, you've translated an official Iranian state-sponsored video called The Coming is Upon Us, which talks about the Iranian government's Shia 12-er belief that the Mahdi will rise to unite Islam, supernaturally defeat its enemies, and establish a worldwide Islamic caliphate. Now, Iran is a theocracy. A theocracy. It's governed by Sharia law and, and uh, the Quran and, and the various Hadiths and whatever uh, heavily influenced their foreign policy. So uh, can you tell us exactly what the Iranian government is actively trying, are they actively trying to make this Islamic prophecy of the Mahdi come true? Well, uh, that's a very good point. And, and my, um, uh, I've, I've explained about this, I've put out several articles uh, and in many interviews I, I have emphasized that the reason that uh, we have failed to negotiate uh, uh, with the regime is that we don't understand their ideology. And so um, uh, basically uh, it is the ideology that we don't understand. They truly believe in the end of times. They truly believe in, uh, in, in the coming of the last uh, Shiites, Messiah, Imam Mahdi, and they believe all these signs of whatever is taking place in the Middle East, which they call the Islamic awakening, in Europe and U.S., the, uh, the fall of the economy, uh, they see these signs as per centuries old hadith, uh, that the time is close, uh, and, the, uh, and, and the trigger is destroying Israel. So when they say that Israel needs to be destroyed, it's not rhetoric. 
uh, it is within their belief that once that's done, then the coming uh, will be upon us. And, 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 and I advise everyone to watch that secret documentary, which I believe the coming is upon us. This was made by the uh, Revolutionary Guards and the Besiege in Iran uh, with the approval of the President's office and the Supreme Leader's office. They were going to distribute this in the Middle East, and I revealed it just as they finished production and showed it to the hierarchy in Iran, and then uh, a whole thing unraveled. This is their theology. This is their ideology, and, and this is what they think the, the world will come to. Endless wars atomic wars, collapse of global economy, have a chaos, lawlessness, millions dead, then Imam Mahdi will come. So they don't have any fear of the United States or Israel retaliating, do they? But, you know, what would actually uh, prompt them to actually attack us or to attack Israel with uh, whatever weapons they might have at their disposal, chemical weapons or, heaven forbid, an electromagnetic pulse bomb? What, w what would prompt that attack? Uh, well, um, basically, uh, they have prepared for war. Uh, we have to understand that. They have prepared for war on several uh, stages. One is uh, within the country, they've formed thousands of battalions to, uh, to be ready when people rise up against the regime to gun them down, to kill all the activists and political prisoners and so forth. Another is for terrorist cells around the world to commit uh, terrorist acts in the U.S., in Europe, uh, and, and all over the world. And then a direct attack on Israel. Now, uh, let me state here, necessarily there does not need to be an attack on, uh, on, on Iran for the regime to act. The regime could preemptively act, and that depends on the timing. Uh, uh, if, if they reach that point of having uh, nuclear uh, bombs, and, and if they feel within their ideology that the time is right. Uh, th these people rely on centuries-old hadiths, so the timing is within that vision, and this is what is uh, so dangerous about that. Okay, so now we move from motivation to methods. How would they attack? Uh, the guards that you say are, are in the United States and, and in Europe, all around the world, waiting for that signal to attack. Exactly what would they do? Would, would uh, this be in combination with an EMP attack? Well, uh, th that's a, a, a real possibility. I revealed uh, uh, before any new uh, news media uh, uh, came out with it that the revolutionary guards have armed the uh, uh, vessels with ballistic missiles. Uh, and that uh, and they are ready. Uh, these ballistic missiles could be launched from anywhere, and they're going to expand their mission into Atlantic Ocean. So you could see a commercial ship, uh, uh, not necessarily a naval ship, uh, a commercial ship coming up uh, uh, um, the Atlantic Ocean uh, close to Venezuela, Cuba, right be behind the Gulf of Mexico, or even further down, and uh, from a container in less than 60 seconds, uh, launch a missile with, uh, 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 with a nuclear bomb on top of it to create an electromagnetic pulse attack. Uh, I have also verified that they've got neutron bombs. Neutron bombs are super EMP bombs. So they could uh, 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 plan an attack as such, which, if successful, only uh, one or two uh, could create such havoc in U.S. and send us back to the 18th century. Uh, all the power grids would fly, everything, everything with electronics would fly, cars would stop uh, operating, um, communication would go down. And actually a report by the Congress, a commission for the Congress, has stated that if such attack were to incur, uh, two-thirds of American population would cease to exist just after one year uh, of such attack. Yeah, I read that. It was from uh, Dr. Peter Vincent Pry. He was a member of the Congressional EMP Commission. And, uh, you know, some of the uh, percentages are up to 90%. And these people are going to be dying from starvation, from disease, from lack of medical care. You won't even be able to pump water unless you've got an old crank pump. So uh, you were speaking about Venezuela uh, a minute ago. Now, don't the Iranians have a secret missile base in Venezuela? Uh, well, uh, they do. Actually, what they did, uh, again, I, I put out something a uh, long time ago that uh, uh, there was a contract between the uh, uh, Islamic regime in Iran and um, 
uh, and the Venezuelan government, uh, Hugo Chavez, uh, where uh, they would build a, a missile site. Uh, the Revolutionary Guards have got many plants in, in Venezuela. It provides as, the, as, the, as, as one of the main hubs of their uh, activity in, in, the, in Latin America, expanding the terror cells, taking Hezbollah and others over there. Uh, and, and so, uh, you see, the, the threat is on multi stages. Uh, it's like a cancerous cell is spreading through, not only throughout the region, throughout the world, and, and we have continuously failed to understand that. Okay. Um, Reza, over the past year, I've been showcasing how the Muslim Brotherhood and Al-Qaeda, which are both Sunni organizations, have had a major role in this so-called Arab Spring. But you've recently published another article that says that the Iranian Revolutionary Guard has also played a role. Now, from what I understand, the Sunni and Shia Muslim sects hate each other so much, uh, it, it rarely a day goes by when they're not blowing up each other's mosques. So how is it that they come to be working together in, in uh, Northern Africa, in the Middle East? Is, is this a case of the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Oh, absolutely. And, 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 and you've got to understand, uh, it was the Islamic regime, the Shiite Islamic regime in Iran, uh, who collaborated with Hamas and armed and financed Hamas. Uh, uh, it was them, uh, it is them are still arming and training Taliban, which at one point they were enemies, uh, uh, helping Al-Qaeda. There are proof and documents that Al-Qaeda operatives uh, are active in Iran, are financed, and, and it, uh, it provides a safe passage for them. And, and, and they've been in uh, a collaboration with the Muslim Brotherhood for decades. They work together to assassinate uh, uh, President um, Anwar Sadat and then Mubarak. Uh, and, and so there's a very close collaboration. And actually in the 90s, early 90s, uh, uh, Ahmad Wahidi, the current defense minister of Iran, which, uh, who is wanted by the Interpol for the Jewish Community Center bombing in Buenos Aires, uh, he... Uh, uh, urged uh, Ahmad Mohmir, he assigned Ahmad Mohmir, the master terrorist, Hezbollah terrorist, to gather around all these factions and to work together for the demise of the West and America. So Al Qaeda, Islamic Jihad, the Palestinian Front, uh, Hezbollah, and all of them. And these are Shiites and Sunnis. And so um, they share a common goal for the destruction of Israel and U.S. If you could take just one minute and tell my viewers the most important thing that they will ever hear in their lives, what will it be? Well, uh, I, I want to really get this uh, across that uh, not understanding the threat of a nuclear armed Islamic regime uh, in Iran, uh, it's going to bring about the demise for humanity. And let me tell you how. how. They're just a single detonation of a nuclear atomic bomb in the Persian Gulf. Even if we were to destroy them, that God forbid that never happens because the majority of Iranians are the most westernized people in the region. They love America, they love Israel, and they've been aspiring for freedom and democracy. But if that were to happen, all the oil flow from that region would, would halt immediately. And so the global economy would collapse immediately, and we would see the uh, greatest depression humanity has ever seen. But so this is the ideology of, of those radicals who have taken Iranians and the world hostage. They know that that would cause such a devastating uh, uh, effect on the world, and, and they think that would uh, uh, facilitate the coming of the last Islamic Messiah and the conquest of Islam of all over the world. So we are going to face horrendous time if we don't take concrete actions and correct actions to stop them from getting the bomb. So basically, what it boils down to, you know, since a lot of my viewers are atheists, some are Muslim, some are Jewish, some are Christian, I've got viewers of, of all faiths and, and, you know, some that practice no faith at all. But what I would like to impress on them right now as I'm looking into this camera is that it doesn't make any difference what your personal religious belief is. It doesn't make any difference if you don't have a religious belief. The only thing that matters is the Iranians do and they are bound and determined to see it through. I'm Pete Santilli, and you're watching The Truth Is Viral. Do not click away. We'll be back with more in just a moment.
Whether we like it or not, radical Islamists are bringing the fight to us, right here in the United States. As Americans, we have the right and the duty to protect our friends and our family from Islamic terrorism. We don't negotiate with terrorists, we just kill them. Real Americans, the young, the old, men, women, even the Amish, stand ready to protect the American homeland from Islamic terrorism. And more and more, they're turning to the most terrifying force multiplier that the world has ever seen. It's called silver bullet gun oil. This is made from 13% pig fat, and it is guaranteed to send an Islamic terrorist straight to hell. In 1902, Black Jack Pershing, famous US Army general, realized the effectiveness of this psychological weapon on Islamic terrorism. He rounded up 50 Islamic terrorists, and he tied 49 of them to stakes. And as they stood there awaiting their death, he brought in a few pigs and put them, in a, uh, slaughtered them in a, in a pit in front of these hostages. Boy, they were, they were terrified. And then and, and they got shot, every single one of them. They were buried in the pit and covered with the pigs' entrails. The 50th terrorist was let go so that he could go tell the rest of his buddies what he'd seen. And for the next 42 years, there was not a single incidence of Islamic terrorism anywhere in the world. That is how effective this weapon is. Since 2004, silver bullet gun oil has been used by members of the United States Marine Infantry, Marine Recon, U.S. Marine Scout Snipers, Navy SEALs, regular Army, Army Rangers, Green Berets, Reserve and National Guard units deployed or being deployed to the Middle East Theater of Operations. Silver bullet gun oil is used by M1 Abrams tank platoons, Apache and Cobra gunships use silver bullet in their miniguns. Many of Allah's holy warriors have been greatly disappointed upon realizing that they did not pass go and they did not collect 72 virgins. A number of air marshals use silver bullet gun oil in their in-flight weaponry. It's been distributed to members of police tactical teams throughout the United States from coast to coast, including members of my local law enforcement community. Oh yeah, buddy. I count on them to protect me from these Islamic terrorists. I can't keep my head on a swivel 24 hours a day. So, yeah, they're the first ones that I gave a bottle of silver bullet gun oil to. The psychological impact of silver bullet gun oil might very well prevent many attacks on American citizens in the U.S. Islamic terrorists don't care about dying, folks. In fact, they welcome the idea. So we have to take that incentive away from them by guaranteeing them an afterlife in hell. Yes, folks, silver bullet gun oil is actually a very good product. I use it myself. And what amazed me is that last year, we, we, we have a hunting camp every year. And uh, a bunch of us get together and go out there and shoot guns, blow stuff up. <laughs> we have a real good time. Of course, we use Tannerite. It's legal. Okay. But when everybody else's gun was jamming, because it was negative two, two degrees below zero. My silver bullet gun oil worked fine. To order your bottle of silver bullet gun oil, send a check or money order for $24.95 to Post Office Box 91, Alpena, Michigan 49707. Or you can use a credit card at www.paypal.me slash the truth is viral. In an interview conducted shortly before he died, author Patrick Heron, who wrote the book The Rise of the Antichrist and the New World Order, came on my show to talk about how the Bible describes New York City as being the whore of Babylon. And he presents a really sound biblical case. And I'm afraid that uh, New York City's demise 
is uh, is coming, and along with it, the rest of the United States. As you saw in the previous clip, the Iranians are uh, already nuclear capable. They can bring a, a cargo container ship within just a few miles of the United States and launch nuclear weapons, giving our forces literally no warning before unleashing a, a nuclear holocaust on the United States. So, if you believe in the Bible, and I do, and, and you're paying attention to current events, you can see how vulnerable that the United States is to a nuclear attack. And, you know, the worst part about that is that it is not uh, going to be limited to New York City. An electromagnetic pulse detonated 150 miles above the United States will fry every microchip within line of sight and uh, send us back to the 1800s in the blink of an eye without the infrastructure to support 330 million people. There's going to be a lot of death and something that we need to prepare for. So without further ado, let's get right to this interview with Mr. Patrick Heron. Patrick, thank you very much for agreeing to be on the show. How are you doing today? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Bobby, for having me on. Now, yeah. as far as uh, the return of the Jews to Israel, obviously that is a sign that cannot be denied. It was prophesied by uh, Isaiah, uh, what, 3,500 years ago? and But the rest of it, the skeptic in me has to ask, wars and rumors of wars and, and pestilence. I mean the bubonic plague come, comes to mind in World War One and World War Two, uh, the Peloponnesian War. There have always been wars and, and diseases. What, what makes this time in history special? What I would say makes it different, Bobby, is the fact that World War One you mentioned happened less than 100 years ago, 90 odd years ago. And there was, what, 20 or 30 million people killed in that war? Now, that had exceeded any other war uh, prior to that. Sure, you got a lot of wars before. Uh, I mean, when you, you spoke about the return of, uh, the prophecy about the return of the Jews to Israel, when Titus went in and, and 70 AD and sacked Jerusalem, he slaughtered about a million Jews back then. And the rest of them were scattered all over the face of the world, hence the wandering Jew. That was to fulfill a prophecy that said the Jews would be scattered all over the world. Everywhere they go, they would be despised and, and persecuted and hated. And uh, that's exactly what happened to them. And that, I think Ireland is one of the few countries that a Jew was never killed in. If you go back and look at the history of everywhere they went, they've been persecuted and murdered and, and, uh, and absolutely hated everywhere. And of course that culminated in the Holocaust when millions of them were killed. But many, many other prophecies that said the Jews must be restored to Israel and Palestine and that God would bring them back there. In fact, one of the prophecies said that this would happen in one day. And on one day back in 1948 in May, uh, the Americans went in with a, a proposal into the UN that Israel be made a nation state again and have its own flag and have its own co country and its own government. It was backed up by the Brits. And in one day, literally, they became a nation state. Now there's six and a half million of them there. But the point was, there was a million, you know, there's often been maybe a million people killed in a war, but 30 million, that was the great war. And they said the war to beat all wars. And they said, this must never happen again. And then 30 years later, they came and they started the second world war. And there was up to 60 million, perhaps 70 million people killed in that. Now you throw that in with what's happened in with Stalin in, in Russia, with uh, Pol Pot, in Cambodia with Mao Zedong, then I'm, I'm, I'm saying that in the last 90 years or so, the amount of millions and millions of people that have been killed in wars far outweighs any other time in history. You put that together with all the rest of the stuff that's going on, uh, not to mention a lot of the new revelation that's coming out now about the, the return of the fallen angels, which is what I write about in my, my new book, Return of the Antichrist in the New World Order, and all the UFOs and you know, alien abductions and sightings and all this other stuff, not to mention what's going on in Hollywood and all the movies that's coming out of there, then I would say uh, that we are definitely in the last days. Whether that's this year, next year, or 10 years or 20 years, I do not know. Okay, well, let me ask you a question. I saw one of your videos on uh, New York City and you compared that city to the horror of Babylon. Uh, it's a very 
interesting theory and the way you laid it out it sure does fit can you talk about that for just a minute okay well as i as i said my my recent book is called return of the antichrist in the new world order and it's all about this man who's coming called the antichrist and uh his various nefarious activities when he does come back to, to earth also i i show in my book what his name is where he comes from where he is at present uh, when he will arrive on the world scene and also his ultimate demise and uh, his future eternal uh, um, demise or where he's going to end up in which is not a very nice place and uh, you know it's because we're in the end times now at the end of the book of Daniel but uh, Bobby Gabriel was talking to Daniel uh, or Daniel was talking to Gabriel the angel Gabriel who dictated the book to him and uh, Daniel asked Gabriel, he said, what do these prophecies mean and when shall they come to pass? Because a lot of the book of Daniel uh, are parallel prophecies with the book of Revelation. Right. And Gabriel said to Daniel, he more or less told him to mind his own business. He said, the prophecies are sealed up until the time of the end. And he said, in the end times, knowledge shall be increased and many will run to and fro. So that knowledge being increased, I believe it's not just a technological knowledge or scientific knowledge, which we've had a, an explosion of in the last hundred years or so, you know, to the point where I can talk to you live now from Dublin, Ireland, and you're over there in Wisconsin. It's incredible. All right, you know, smartphones, I can talk to my kids and see their faces. Huge increase in knowledge. But I believe it's also a knowledge in the in the word of God and in these secrets and mysteries that have been disguised and hidden by God, which are a lot of them hidden in plain sight in the book of Revelation. So that's why this place is coming out now. So. In the 17th and 18th chapter of the book of Revelation, it says, And he, the angel, said unto me, The waters which you saw where the whore or the harlot sits are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the woman which you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. Okay, so in other words, it tells you exactly what the woman is. It says that, it says that woman you saw is the great city which reigns over the kings of the earth five times in Revelation 17 and 18 we're told that this prostitute the whore of Babylon the harlot the great woman that he says is a great city okay so if people says that it's the Roman Catholic Church they're wrong or if they say it's a Muslim Empire they are wrong or if they say that it's several cities or, or countries out in Eastern Europe or in the Arab world they are wrong because five times we're told it is a great city Okay, so when it says, and the woman which you saw is a great city which reigns over the kings of the world, if you turn that around, it means that the Antichrist and his prime ministers or his generals are going to reign from this great city. Anyway, we'll go on and I'll give you so, some more uh, clues about this great city. It says, and he, the angel, cried with a loud voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen and has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean bird. And then it says, and they, and the 10 horns, this again is talking about the 10 rulers who are going to reign with the Antichrist, which you saw upon the beast, these shall hate the prostitute, which is the city, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. Now this is talking about the end of the uh, time of the apocalypse when this great city is going to be burnt with fire again this is right. the future i believe this is time in the time of the uh of armageddon but i i have to point that out because talking about this 10 these 10 rulers it says when it's burnt with fire it talks about the great merchants and kings of the earth when they see this great city burning it says and this is in Revelation 18, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. The merchants which were made rich by her, that's another clue, shall stand afar off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And it goes on, it says, The merchants of the earth, which waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. There's another hint. An abundance of her delicacies means her excessive luxuries. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buys their merchandise anymore. 
and it then it gives a list of everything you can buy in this great city. It says gold, silver, precious stone, pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, high mine wood, ma all manner of vessels of ivory, precious wood, brass, marble, etc., etc. And it says the merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand the far off, saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was located that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and, and pearls. For in one hour is so great riches come to naught. And it says, and every shipmaster, there's another clue, and all the company of ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, alas, alas, that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships on the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour she is made desolate. Now that this great city, in other words, it's a huge trading city. The reason it gives us a whole list of goods is, is that's what it's, it's telling us there. I believe the clue is saying is you can buy anything in this great city. And we go back to Jeremiah chapter 49 and 50 for these prophecies. Now these prophecies in Jeremiah chapter 49 and 50 are also speaking about this great city. And not only this great city, but also that not only Babylon, but the land of the Babylonians. So now it's talking about the city and the country that this city is generated as in. Now we know that Jeremiah is talking about uh, the same time of the apocalypse, Bobby, because eight times in these uh, um, two chapters, it talks about it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, the day of vengeance, uh, the day of the Lord, the day of his cruel wrath, Christ's day, that day, uh, the day of his cruel anger, all these are expressions referring to the day of wrath or the day of the Lord, which we call the great tribulation or the time of the apocalypse, the seven years of great tribulation or three and, three and a half years, whichever it is, I'm not totally sure. So we go on and we get some of the clues from Jeremiah and this one is Jeremiah chapter 50 verse one. And it says, this is the word of the Lord spoke to Jeremiah the prophet concerning Babylon and the land of the Babylonians. And he says, even if Babylon reaches the sky and fortifies her lofty strongholds, I will send destroyers against her, declares the Lord. So this city reaches the sky and fortifies her lofty strongholds. He goes on in verse 15. She surrenders, her towers fall, her walls are torn down, since this is the vengeance of the Lord. And again, this is referring to the time where it's going to be attacked and born with fire, with fire. And it says, before your eyes, I will repay Babylon and all who live in Babylonia. So this place, and you know, it says several times that this city is going to be, is going to be drenched in the blood of the saints and the blood of the prophets and martyrs and the blood of the people of the land. And she's going to, re, re, Babylon is going to be, be repaid and all who live in Babylonia. So there's a number of clues I've covered in there and I'm gonna give them all to you now to your listeners and then they can uh, decide what, what city they think it is. So let us summarize all these hints uh, thus far. Number one, the implication is that this great city is a sea trading city with a great harbor. Two, everything is for sale that anyone could ever want to buy in this great city. Three, it is the financial center for world trade and commerce. Four, businessmen, merchants, bankers have made vast fortunes by trading with this city. Five, this city has a multicultural population drawn from all corners of the globe. Six, this city has high towers and lofty strongholds that reach to the sky. Seven, the headquarters of the government of the Antichrist will rule from its headquarters or its offices in this wealthy city. Eight, this city is described as the mother of prostitutes and has a golden cup in her hand and she sits by many waters. Nine, this city and country has excessive luxuries and vast riches. In other words, this country and the people in this country are probably the richest people that ever lived in the history of the world. Ten, this city is, an ev is evil and all manner of sin and godlessness will operate there. So there basically are the 10 clues and uh, I think you and most other people can probably come to the same conclusion, Bobby, as to what this city is talking about. The New World Order and the leaders of, of our world today in the EU, in Russia, in China and in America 
and all these people who want to bring in a new world order and talk about a one world government, they always talk about the United Nations as being the vehicle whereby they want to utilize in order to bring about this great new world order and one world government. And the headquarters of the United Nations is in New York City. When, when he was having his visions, when, when he was shown these visions on the Isle of Patmos, he saw lightning and he heard thunder and rumbling and, and felt earthquakes. Now, can you describe what that really is in, in 21st century terms? Absolutely. Th this happens at the end of the seven seals, the seven trumpets and the seven vials. It talks about a huge army from the east numbering 200 million are going to wipe out about a third of the population of the earth in their mass went westward towards this valley in, in northern Israel called the Valley of Megiddo. And when, he get, when they get there, the Antichrist puts a huge military power from the west are there already. And there's a sort of a Mexican standoff between these huge military powers. Now this is at the end, we're cutting to the end of, uh, of the book of Revelation here, to the Valley of Megiddo. In ancient times, the Valley of Megiddo was always a, a valley that anybody coming from Europe and the East, if they wanted to go to China or India, they would have to pass through this valley because of the mountains running north and south. It's about, you know, 30 miles long, about 10 miles wide. Anybody coming from the Far East and wanting to go to Europe and to the West would have to cut funnel through this valley. So it talks about this huge army from both sides meeting in this valley of Megiddo. Then I believe there's a sort of a Mexican standoff. It talks about silence in heaven for a half an hour. And then John said what he saw was flashes of lightning, peals of thunder, rumblings, and a huge earthquake. And he said, no earthquake was like this that was ever seen in the world before. And he said, uh, he said, all the cities of the nations fell down. Now, I believe what John was describing there was a nuclear strike because he said he saw flashes of lightning similar to the flashes of lightning we saw for instance when they were going into Iraq and missiles firing at night like flashes of lightning as all these uh, missiles and bombs were shot off and fired into the night sky it said he saw lightning again again if you're standing near these huge uh, uh, missiles when they're shooting off it's like lightning he heard rumblings the rumblings were the the distant the explosions in the distance when he heard these bombs going off boom 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 and he said peals of thunder again uh, i believe you're a military man if you're standing where anywhere near these huge rockets and, and uh, missiles when they'll be fired off they're like cracks of, of lightning in your ear banging off all over the place so when he saw flashes of lightnings he heard uh, peals of, of or flashes of lightning peals of thunder rumblings and a severe earthquake and he said no earthquake was ever like this in the whole world before and he said all the cities of the nations fell down now the world nuclear strike were not in john's vocabulary john was probably in his 90s when he got this vision of the isle of in on the isle of patmos when he wrote the book of revelation he could only describe things in terms of his own understanding and his own vocabulary so when he saw flashes of lightning peals of thunder rumblings uh, uh, and thunders he was describing a nuclear strike and the one that seals it for me bobby is the fact that he said all the cities of the nations fell down now brother let me tell you there's only one thing that's going to make all the cities of the nations fall down at the same time and that is a nuclear strike and that's why i read earlier describing uh, the the great prostitute the great city the horror of babylon new york city it's going to be burned on fire and one error in one hour, it's going to receive huge destruction.
Yes, folks, it would be uh, awesome if you could help me <laughs> uh, help save lives and win souls for Jesus Christ in these very last days because Facebook is screwing with me. YouTube's got me uh, shadow banned. A, an episode of The Truth is Viral that you see here on Liberty One that gets 40,000 views might get 700 after I upload it to YouTube. Uh, Twitter locked my account this morning. <laughs> it took me about three hours to get it back. Uh, Alex Jones is banned from Twitter. Laura Loomer is banned from Facebook. Uh, independent media is under attack everywhere. And I really need your help to buy more memory, hard drives, terabyte hard drives to maintain my library of, of shows. I've got over 450 that I've got to uh, safeguard. And, you know, possibly get my own servers. It might come down to that. It might come down to us having to deliver messages to one another by uh, Pony Express. You never know. But uh, whatever. These people are not going to uh, stop us or intimidate us. And remember, this Friday, we begin an anti-Marxist marathon here on Liberty One, hosted by my brother from another mother, Peter T. Santilli. And all of your favorite Liberty One hosts are going to be uh, participating in this event. I have some folks over from InfoWars, and, and we will get, uh, we'll get the signal out. They can't stop us all. And uh, especially not with God on our side. You know what I'm talking about, folks? But uh, what I want, to, want you to take away from this episode of The Truth is Viral is that our history was seen a long time ago by somebody that can stand outside of our space-time and see the whole thing from beginning to end, the Creator, our Father in Heaven. And we're told exactly what's going to happen. We're told that there's going to be a, a great tribulation and that we're going to have to suffer for, from it. And I don't want you folks to get caught up in normalcy bias. Things have been going great. They, they've really improved under President Trump. And Americans are once again full of hope. But the Bible tells us that we will suffer through tribulation. And you need to prepare for it. So stockpile food, stockpile weapons and ammunition in order to keep your family safe until our king returns. And just a couple of minutes, my brother from another mother, Peter T. Santilli, is going to be on <clears throat> Liberty One with a special guest, Owen Schroyer from InfoWars. And that's something that you don't want to miss. Remember to like, comment, and share all of Liberty One's shows in order to get the truth out to the people. And if it's in your ability, please go to bobpowell.blogspot.com and hit that PayPal button and support my mission to save lives and win souls for Jesus Christ in these very last days. Don't forget to subscribe to The Truth is Viral at uh, bobpowell.blogspot.com, on Facebook, at facebook.com slash the truth is viral, and uh, for the moment, <laughs> maybe Twitter, <laughs> at buddy0353. I had to uh, generate a second account because I, well, Liberals just don't like my sense of humor. What can I say? <laughs> uh, you'll get to be able to watch The Truth is Viral live right here on the Liberty One Network every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday from 7 p.m. until 8. And this, uh, this Friday when uh, Pete starts his anti-Marxist marathon, I will be on twice in the first few hours. I'll be on at 7 and then again at 10. And we are just going to have a blast. I, it's going to be an epic broadcast. And the lineup is going to be all-star. Absolutely all-star. All of your favorite Liberty One hosts, hosts from InfoWars. And uh, folks, it's going to be really informative, really entertaining, because you know I like to have fun when, uh, when we're broadcasting here on Liberty One. And uh, it's going to be great. Trust me. So make sure that you tune in to Liberty One for the entire broadcast. It's going to be like a three-day marathon. Begins at 6 p.m. this Friday, August 17th. I would like to thank everybody for watching The Truth is Viral. My name is Bob Powell. And as always, God bless, Semper Fi, and hoorah. Pete Santilli's up next with Owen Schroyer. Thank you for watching The Truth is Viral with your host, Bobby Powell. 
Make sure to follow The Apocalypse on Twitter at The Truth Is Viral. Like The Truth Is Viral on Facebook, and if you can, please remember to donate to the cause via PayPal at www.bobpowell.blogspot.com.